Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. Alright, so today we are going to be learning how to retouch your beauty portrait and keep it as natural as possible. When I say natu as natural as possible, I mean retaining all the features, all the skin textures, but still being able to perfectly retouch your skin. So that is what we're going to be looking at today. So without wasting your time, let's quickly get started. Okay, so this is our image. The first thing I want to do on this image is that I want to take care of the blemishes. And before I, I continue, the action we're going to be using in this particular video, which is photographic skin retouch action, you are getting it for free so that you can be able to practice along and still be able to use all the pro features in there. So all you need to do is to just comment um, interested in the comment section and as well click on the WhatsApp link that is attached to the bio of this video or to the description of this video so that you can be able to get access to the action in our WhatsApp community. So without wasting your time, let's quickly get started with our skin retouching. So I'm going to be taking care of the blemishes. To do that, I'm going to run my clean black and white layer here. So what that does for us is that it just uh, gives us a black and white adjustment layer that is crushed down so much that the blemishes will start popping out on its own so looking at it now you could see that the blemishes are very strong but if we remove it you probably may not see all that the black and white will show you so i'm going to move to my clean pick up my any of my uh blemish removal tools and start working so for this one i'm going to use patch tool first on these big blemishes just these big ones so that we don't spend all our time being blemish removal All right, so quickly let's use a uh, sponge removal tool just to take care of the small ones. All right, so, so far so good. I think we're going to stop there. Okay, so I think I have a little bit of it here. All right, so let me show you the before and after of our blemishes. This is the before, this is the after, the before, the after. So we're going to be working on this image like this and fix the rest we can using our frequency separation. So today we're going to be using our frequency separation action I'm going to play the action. So what it's going to do is that it's going to load up your Gaussian blur and say, pick the number you want. So because of the way we set the action, you will not see the preview on your main screen, but there is a smaller box within your, your Gaussian blur that you can use to see exactly what it's giving you. So because we want to uh, retain some textures, we're going to be doing a number slightly higher than what it should be normally, but will not be going so high so that you can as well see what we are doing at the end of the day. So I'm going to be sticking so around four. Or rather, let's try seven because I'm looking at the image. All right, so press OK. Seven is a good place to be for this image. Then I'm going to go to my low frequency, turn off my high frequency layer. So the reason I'm turning it off my high frequency frequency layer yes the reason i'm turning it up off is so that i can see just the tones without the textures so i'm going to pick up my mixer brush too i'm using my wetness at 33 and my flow at 31 so i'm just going to quickly start painting over the object how do you know where to paint and where not to paint it's very simple you paint the highlight separately paint the shadow separately then in the mid-tone, you blend them together. And that is how you are going to achieve a flawless skin. So without wasting your time, let's put it get going. So I'm just going to paint these highlights over here. Okay, so you could notice that I'm just staying within the bright, within this highlight, I'm not going out yet. So once you are done with the highlights, you can go over to this side and paint them separately without going into the highlights. So what I'm going to do at the edges is I'm going to try to blend it in together. So I'm just going to make circular motions at the edge where they intercepted so they can blend in perfectly. So let me show you a quick before and after. So this is it, the before, the after, the before, the after. So looking at this image now, I want to break a rule. I want to paint this shadow out a little so that I will have a very seamless transition. Okay, we are good. So move down to the body. Or other part of the face just like this so you notice the way i'm painting it side by side side by side so i could get very close to uniform results very very important okay so we'll come to the nose without this area then this area as well 
in this area as well. Do the same thing over here. So let's have a quick look at the before and after so far. The before, the after, the before, the after. So you notice we're already making a whole lot of changes, but the image is still looking very much the same. So that is the idea of the whole thing. You are going to make a whole lot of changes, but you will maintain the originality of your image. Very, very important. All right, so we're done with our frequency separation. Using our mixer brush, this is the before, this is the after, this is the before, this is the after. So one more thing you can do is that you can go to your high frequency, pick up your clone stamp tool, then zoom in close on the image to take care of the last blemishes. So I'm noticing some skin textures here, so I'm going to fix this one. All right, so after taking care of your blemishes, the next thing you might want to do is your dodge and burn, which is very, very important. And we are going to be running that on the image right now. So to do our dodge and burn, we are going to load our dodge and burn check layer. So we we'll first of all load our dodge and load our burn. So now we we'll have our dodging and burning, but the problem is that we are so distracted by color that we are not even seeing where the lights are falling on perfectly. And that is where this check layer comes in, the dodge and burn check layer. So once you just play, the image is separated in such a way that you could see the highlights and the shadows. So when you are using this particular check layer, just know that your blacks are your highlights and your whites are your shadows. Very simple. So what does that mean? We'll paint our dodge using the black areas. I'll paint the black areas using our dodge. Just a very quick one. Do the same thing for the nose. Do the same thing for this area. All right, so we'll move to the next one. Look at the chin here. All right, so we'll come over to the polar bone. Make here a bit darker. Make here a bit darker. Can even darken here a little. So what it means is that I'm brightening it in the vast mode. So once we turn off the check there, you notice that we're actually brightening those areas. All right, so move to the bone. Very simple opposite of all we did. We just make the bright areas brighter in the check layer. Because this area has to be a bit brighter. The same thing with this area has to be a bit brighter. All right, so we'll turn over our check layer and see what we've done so far. So I'm going to be merging our dodge and bond together. This is the before, this is the after, this is the before, this is the after. So you notice the way our image is standing out. Except for this area, I think I need to dodge that area a little. So the next thing we want to do is on this image is to take care of the eyes. To take, to take care of the eyes. So I'm just going to open my all-in-one eye action. So what this is going to allow us is that it's going to allow us to target specific areas in the eyes. So the first one I want to use is my uh, vein remove action or group within that same action. So we'll just use it to clean the eye of veins. Yeah, I know it's not bright yet. We'll brighten that up later. So we'll just remove the veins. All right. So the next thing we need to do is go to the brightening eyeball brightening and just brighten stores up all right so the next thing we want to do is our iris color so i'm just going to paint over the eye then change the color to whatever i prefer all right so i want to make the eye brighter because it's looking a bit blurry so i'm going to double click on this hue and saturation increase it up a little and desaturate it a little and now we're having very clean eye. So if we do the before and after, you notice that the eye is now open out a little bit more. So we go back to our actions. So the next thing we want to do is our lip glow, lip glow. So I'll just flame my lip glow, pick up my brush and just paint over the lips. Just give it some glow effects. Nice. All right. So having done all of this, the next thing I want to take care of is my I want to take care of the texture. So if I zoom in, you'll notice that the skin texture is still looking quite rough. So how do we take care of that? We'll come all the way up to soft, smooth skin. So we'll just play the action. We'll pick up our brush tool and start painting over the skin. 
Of course, you can reduce this at the end of the day if the intensity is too strong for your image. So just paint over these areas as as we can. Don't need to be too careful about this. Does a pretty good job doing that. Okay, so we'll come down to the body. All right, so I'm going to first reduce the intensity. So it doesn't make our image start looking AI. All right, so I'm going to match this up. And the next thing I want to do is to apply my done for you. So I'm just going to collapse this, open up my done for you and hit play, keeping it at four. And wow, our done for you is done. So I'm just going to still reduce that intensity because I don't want it looking too edited. So I'm going to reduce it, match it up. And now let's quickly start working on our skin tone. The first thing we need to do is to match our skin tone so that everything will look very, very uniform before we apply our color lookup that we are going to be using. And before I forget as well, you are getting the color lookup that we are going to be using to color grade this image for free. So you have a lot to get for free in this particular one. So the next thing I want to do is to go to my gradient map. Hide it. Yeah, very important. Then pick up my tools like this. So I, I need to actually select the color. So the first one we're going to be selecting is the brightest part of the skin. And please, when you are selecting this, make sure you are on the gradient map icon, not on the mask. So I just uh, go to select something bright. I will copy the brightness number, which is the B and paste in my location. Do the same thing. So we are going for the darkest area, which is here. I will also copy the brightness, paste in my location and create one more that we'll be using to copy our mid tone. So I think here is a good place to be for the mid tone of it there. Brightness, paste in the location, press OK. Then we can open this up now, go to our color range and just select our skin tone just like that. So I'll just add this area up. All right, press enter, change the blend mode to soft light or color. I think color is the best one. Reduce the opacity or the fill till you get something very, very good. I think I actually like it without blend mode, but you know what? Color is fine. All right, so we'll go through to make sure we'll have a uniform tone and it's not touching places we do not want it to touch. So this is the before, this is the after, this is the before, this is after. Very, very quickly. So I'm going to match it up then. Import my color lookup. So I'll go to my color lookup, go to load 3D lot and find it. So Excuse me, this is the first form we're going to be using. So because I need to have my skin tone selected, let me just do all of that once. So I just took it a few steps back so I can copy this same mask. So I'll just go to my lookup and load the first one. Beautiful. So I'm going to hold my alternate, copy the mask, position it over the image and reduce it still. So the next one, which is the last color lookup we're going to be using, we'll bring it in as well. So go to color lookup. All right, so we'll have all our skin tone loaded up already. So I'm going to match this up and show you the before, the after, the before, the after. So you can decide to just reduce it slightly and you have a very nice coffee brown skin tone. So I'm going to match this up and, I, and do the very last thing, which is my hue and saturation. I want my views to pop up. So to do that, I'll just pick up my hand tool and select this area. I've seen it as cyan. I will increase the saturation slightly and just move the sliders around a little i just want that blues to pop and very saturated and all of that because we are having everything toned down so that will just make the whole thing stand out the before the after let me come a bit closer the before the after so let me just create a snapshot of everything we have done so you would see how much we've come all right so this is the snapshot over here yeah beautiful so this is the image when we came into photoshop flat not looking together at all then this is the result we had after the whole retouching thank you so much for watching i believe you learned a lot if you have questions, go to the comment section, drop it. And remember to comment interested in the comment section to get access to the lot and to the action. If you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, do make sure you are subscribed right now. And when you subscribe on your notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video. Until then, see you 
on the next one.